This is the market square of Gunsberg in Bavaria. It's winter's day, it's the 31st of January 2019. It's minus two degrees at the moment. I was due to come here on the 6th of June last year, and I didn't. And I see now what I missed by not having my bicycle with me. It's a historic town but it has been marked by two names in its history which have somewhat blackened it. Uh, two people from the Nazi regime. One was a very highly placed within that regime, but it's somebody you've probably never heard of. The other was a, let's say, a functionary, a cog in the wheels, somebody who Hitler almost certainly never heard of, almost certainly never met, and he's somebody you all know the name of. The first name is that of Franz Xavier Schwarz. He was the Nazi party treasurer. He came from Gunsberg, born in 1875. The second is Josef Mengele, and it was his father who owned the uh, town's major, uh, main uh, um, company. It was um, at one stage 10% the entire population actually worked at the, the plant and it's this name which has blackened the name of the town anyway I'm going to do more on that in a, another film but uh, so this now I'm largely going to talk about uh, other periods of history and what we can see here and this tower here dates back to this uh, to 1615 and uh, when people in those days wanted to come into the town to trade, because they traded from here where the cars are now parked, they had to pay a toll to come in. And so that's how uh, the local authorities raised money. That's quite common in many places to do something along those lines. At the top up here we can see a fountain. Uh, it's covered at the moment, not a surprise really. It's minus two degrees, as I said earlier, and so they've covered that for the, uh, the winter period. And that is quite a recent addition, and that shows events from the history of the town. Now we're located here to the east of Ulm. It's really on the border of Bavaria and uh, Baden-Württemberg and it's closely linked to the Habsburgs. I think I'll be seeing more about that later in this film. Now down here we have a building which is on the left hand side. Well it's no longer there, it's gone, but it was an inn where this hotel is now. And that's where the, uh, the Habsburg Emperor, uh, Joseph II, the Bavarian King, Max uh, Joseph, used to uh, get boozed up on the evenings. And in front of me we can see something which is called the Cow Tower, which is a 16th century an octagonal building with a very unusual name and uh, this part we're sort of at the top of a hill and the old wall as everywhere sort of goes round where the, uh, the, the top of the hill where people would live for protection. Now, I mentioned earlier about uh, that um, Hitler probably never heard of uh, 
Josef Mengele. In 1932, Hitler actually made a speech. In October 32, he's on the campaign trail, and he made a speech here, and that was at the Gunsberg, the Mengele factory in Gunsberg. Although I believe at that time that Josef Mengele was in fact at university. So that is a. Uh, I, I can't prove it, but that's what I actually think. Um, although there is this nasty Nazi period to think about, this is uh, the town has tried to make amends, and the one way it's tried to make amends is things such as this monument here. This is to Janusz Korczak, who had the um, an orphanage uh, in. Uh, Warsaw is noted for his orphanage in the uh, in the ghetto, and these same street as I used to live in, in uh, in Warsaw, and he was sent to Treblinka on the 15th or 16th of August 1942, and a memorial to him here. But he was very well known in pedagogical circles before the war, allegedly before he was sent to Treblinka. There was a uh, when the people on the guards, the SS or police, uh, knew who he was, and he said he didn't have to go. That's a story which I do personally find rather hard to believe. So I don't see how it was actually ported down. Here in front, we have the um, there's a church, and the church is uh, called Frauenkirche. It's the most substantial historic building. It was built by Dominicus Zimmerman. And in front of the church, as always, we have the war memorial. But uh, I can't see uh, any names on it. So it's a bit faded, that is to the First World War. And uh, I tried to read the writing, but maybe my eyes are just getting bad, or it's the. Uh, it's become a bit weathered. This building used to be the Franciscan Monastery, and it's now called the English Institute. And on the same theme as. England, we have over here the house of the first English Fraulein. Well, that's what's written, don't know what it means. There you go, 1758 to 1759, the, uh, the place of residence of the first English Fraulein. So, I wonder who that could be. And in <laughs> In this place here, this is the street where the uh, poor of the uh, uh, town once lived. Although it has been somewhat done up, I think I can sort of imagine what it must have looked like 200 years ago. Here on the left, we have this green building, which is what was once called a pow powder tower, which I think I'd call an armory today, where the ammunition was kept, later used as a prison. It is a 15th century building, conveniently located right next to the Austrian barracks of the town. And this I suspect was the parade ground. It's not a very big parade ground, but the barracks aren't very big, so maybe you didn't need a big place to do the parading in. Oh, sorry. Um, one thing over here which I need to mention is the monument uh, memorial 
to the victims of Josef Mengele, which uh, was completed by children from a school, shows these eyes. One of the pseudo experiments of Mengele was to try and change the colours of eyes. He was particularly interested in twins. The reason for having twins was he would experiment on one and the second child would be the control. And when the experimented child died, the control would be, the child would be murdered and then they would have two sets to compare. You can see there the words um, written below it and the name of the school Maria Vard Gymnasium Gusberg and Dossenberger Gymnasium Gunsberg. A memorial to the victims of the concentration camp, Dr. Josef Mengele. Memorial to the dead of the uh, Second World War and for a town where the population was at the beginning was less than 6,000 people. It grew to over 10,000. That's because of industries which were placed here during the Second World War. But you see the amount of names. Uh, we've got to assume uh, this is based on the population of 6,000 and that is a lot of names uh, in uh, Hitler's war. And I will also point out one, although it's not within the direct family that I've been referring to. You have a name here, uh, Hans Mengele. Although he wasn't a direct relative of the uh, Kurt Mengele, uh, the founder, founder of the company, but the, um, the, the, run, the person who ran the Mengele company here, and the father of three sons, one of which was Josef. have here on the former place for watering animals, I suppose mainly horses, we have a statue to remind people, a four statues to remind people what once happened here. With a fountain, which for obvious reasons is not in action at the moment, and look it shows how cold it is, as I mentioned earlier. Nice clear day, but it's pretty cold. Anyway, there's my hand. And most of the time I've been wearing gloves. The name Gunsberg comes from the Roman word, which is Gontia, and the town was named after a Roman water goddess. Danube River close by which formed part of the border of the Roman Empire around the area I am now there was a Roman settlement although there's not much to be seen today in fact you've possibly just about seen just about all of it in a few seconds ago so there is however a interesting route called the Via Danubia follows the uh, uh, Danube River and you can cycle up it in summer, of course, now it would be rather difficult, or oh, unpleasant anyway, but in summer uh, it would be great. That's just the sort of thing that I would want to do. And there's somebody giving away camper vans. This street is called the Cow Hill, Kuhlberg. Let's have a look why. Because in former times, farmers would drive their cows and other animals, pigs, sheep even, up here through the cow tower 
and up to market. And on the left, you see, um, Cloister Garden, the Cloister Garden, because the monastery is up there. Or was up there anyway, it's no longer a monastery. So this was the location of the former Mengele Berg in Gunsberg. At its height it employed 1,900 people. So it's a very significant employer in the town. And if you think of all the suppliers and the, the chain uh, the suppliers of the suppliers, you can see that it's um, very important for a town of so few comparative inhabitants. So at one stage you had roughly one person in uh, five working at this uh, plant. It's now moved to outside, it still, still exists, it no longer uses the name Mengele of course, and it's under completely new ownership. This street is called the Stadtgraben and whenever you see that in a German town you know that that once marked the boundary of the town itself. So a uh, Stadt, town, uh, Graben means ditch, moat, something like that. So this is where the city wall once would have been and so we've got these old houses on one side gardens and the ditches clearly now have been filled in, it's no longer here, but it does mark the boundary, historic boundary of the town. The street on the right is called Munzgasse. Munz as in mint, as in minting coins. And this part of Austria had the right to uh, produce its own coinage. And that was done around here, under the Habsburgs. Now some of these buildings, which uh, have this old form, may not necessarily be old. One I walked past earlier was built in 1985. However, it does show respect for tradition. Now we'll come round here to the, uh, the town hall. And the castle.
So the town hall is the place where the uh, coins were minted for this part of Austria, as I mentioned earlier. And a bit further down, we've got the castle and we've got the the church. Oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to do this slowly. The the filming, it's not always easy. it's not easy because my hands are so cold. <laughs> So we've got the tourist information here on the left, which is open until one o'clock. So it opens at ten. So three hours open uh, in the winter, maybe open longer in the summer. And here, castle. But um, castle probably isn't the right word in English. It's always hard to find the right word. The uh, manor house, not quite, is it? Fortification. Uh, something along those lines. Now this was the former residence of the Margrave Karl who was in power uh, from 1609 to 1618 and the church as you can see it has a Renaissance style. a car from the German army. We serve Germany. That's what's written. And if I come back down here, this will bring me back out into the main square, which is more or less where I started this tour from. I hope you find that interesting. If it was, I've done plenty more in my tours around Germany. I'm now going to get onto my main historical theme though from here, which is that related to the hunt for Josef Mengele. And uh, I shall be publishing that whenever I finish it. Although that could be for some time yet. I need to point out the temperature really is freezing, even if that gentleman that walked past now was wearing short trousers. Now in the market square, there's 40 such buildings with these magnificent fronts. I think uh, this is a good place to end, but to show that, um, oh, I've showed that this town is not just the, the, the two names or the one name of all that it's noted for, but it's got much more history beside and, and it's got some great cycle paths as well.